Hello students, the topic of today's module is Membrane Dynamics. In today's lecture, we will learn about the dynamics of biological membranes, that is, membrane fluidity, the motions that occur in membranes, structures allowed by such motions like lipid rafts and caveolins, cell-cell interaction and addition, and membrane fusion. Biological membranes define cellular boundaries. They divide cells into discrete compartments, organize complex reaction sequences, and act in signal reception and energy transformations. The combined evidence from electron microscopy and studies of chemical composition, as well as physical studies of permeability and the motion of individual protein and lipid molecules within membranes, led to the development of the fluid mosaic model for the structure of biological membranes. One remarkable feature of all biological membranes is their flexibility, their ability to change shape without losing their integrity. The basis for this property is the non-covalent interactions among lipids in the bilayer and the motions allowed to individual lipids because they are not covalently anchored to one another. Membrane dynamics involve the motions that occur within the membranes and the transient structures allowed by these motions. Although the lipid bilayer structure is quite stable, its individual phospholipid and sterol molecules have some freedom of motion. The structure and flexibility of the lipid bilayer depend on temperature and on the kinds of lipids present. At relatively low temperatures, the lipids in a bilayer form a semi-solid gel phase in which all types of motions of individual lipid molecules are strongly constrained. At relatively high temperatures, in the liquid disordered state or fluid state, the interior of the bilayer is more fluid than solid and the bilayer is like a sea of constantly moving lipid. At intermediate temperatures, the lipids exist in a liquid ordered state. There is less thermal motion in the acyl chains of the lipid bilayer, but lateral movement in the plane of the bilayer still takes place. At temperatures in the physiological range, Long chain saturated fatty acids pack well into liquid ordered array. But the kinks in the unsaturated fatty acids interfere with this packing, favoring the liquid disordered state. Shorter chain fatty acyl groups have the same effect. The sterol content of a membrane is another important determinant of liquid state. The rigid planar structure of the steroid nucleus inserted between fatty acyl side chains reduces the freedom of neighboring fatty acyl chains to move by rotation about their carbon-carbon bonds, forcing acyl chains into their fully extended conformation. The presence of sterols, therefore, reduces the fluidity in the core of the bilayer, thus favoring the liquid ordered phase and increases the thickness of the lipid leaflet. Cells regulate their lipid composition to achieve a constant membrane fluidity under various growth conditions. For example, bacteria synthesize more unsaturated fatty acids and fewer saturated ones when cultured at low temperatures than when cultured at high temperatures. As a result of this adjustment in lipid composition, membranes of bacteria cultured at high or low temperatures have about the same degree of fluidity.
transbilayer movement. At physiological temperature, transbilayer or flip-flop diffusion of a lipid molecule from one leaflet of the bilayer to the other occurs very slowly. Transbilayer movement requires that a polar or charged head group leave its aqueous environment and move into the hydrophobic interior of the bilayer, a process with a large positive free energy change. But there are situations in which such movements uh, are essential. Establishment and maintenance of lipid asymmetry involves several membrane proteins. These lipid translocators include ATP-dependent flipases and flopases and energy-independent scramblases. Flipases catalyze lipid transfer towards the inner leaflet and flopases towards the outer leaflet. When a new membrane or organelle is being generated, lipid synthesis takes place on one side of the bilayer. In such cases, flipases and flopases make the membrane more symmetric. On the other hand, scramblases are involved in calcium-dependent transbilayer movement of phospholipids. Now let's look at the lateral movement. Lipids and proteins move laterally in the lipid bilayer. Individual lipid molecules move in the plane of the membrane by changing places with neighboring lipid molecules. Lateral diffusion can be shown experimentally by attaching fluorescent probes to the head groups of lipids and using fluorescence microscopy to follow the probes over time. In one technique called FRAP, which stands for fluorescence recovery after photobleaching, a small region of a cell surface with fluorescence tagged lipids is bleached by intense laser radiation so that the irradiated patch no longer fluoresces when viewed in the much dimmer light of the fluorescence microscope. However, within milliseconds, the region recovers its fluorescence as unbleached lipid molecules diffuse into the bleached batch and bleached lipid molecules diffuse away from it. The rate of FRAP is a measure of the rate of lateral diffusion of the lipids. Using the FRAP technique, researchers have shown that some membrane lipids diffuse laterally by up to one micrometer per second. Another technique, single particle tracking, allows one to follow the movement of a single lipid molecule in the plasma membrane on a much shorter time scale. Results from these studies confirm the rapid lateral diffusion within small, discrete regions of the cell surface and show that movement from one such region to a nearby region is inhibited. That is, lipids behave as though corralled by fences that they can occasionally jump. Many membrane proteins seem to be afloat in a sea of lipids. Like membrane lipids, these proteins are free to diffuse laterally in the plane of the bilayer and are in constant motion, as shown by the FRAP technique with fluorescence-tagged surface proteins. Some membrane proteins associate to form large aggregates or patches on the surface of a cell or organelle like acetylcholine receptors that form dense patches on neuron plasma membranes at synapses. Other membrane proteins are anchored to internal structures that prevent their free diffusion like glycophorin tethered to spectrin, a filamentous cytoskeletal protein in RBC membrane. Membrane rafts and caviolins. Lipid rafts are membrane microdomains enriched in sphingolipids, cholesterol, and certain lipid-linked proteins. We have seen that diffusion of membrane lipids from one bilayer leaflet into the other is very slow, unless catalyzed, and that the different lipid species of the plasma membrane are asymmetrically distributed 
in the two leaflets of the bilayer. Even within a single leaflet, the lipid distribution is not random. Glycosphingolipids, like cerebrosides and gangliosides, which typically contain long chain saturated fatty acids, form transient clusters in the outer leaflet. The long saturated acyl groups of the sphingolipids can form more compact, more stable associations with cholesterol than when compared to the shorter, often unsaturated chains of the phospholipids. So, cholesterol sphingolipid microdomains in the outer monolayer of the plasma membrane are slightly thicker and more ordered, which is less fluid than neighboring microdomains rich in phospholipids and are more difficult to dissolve with non-ionic detergents. They behave like liquid ordered sphingolipid rafts, adrift in a sea of liquid disordered phospholipids. These lipid rafts contain two classes of integral membrane proteins, lipid anchored proteins and GPI anchored proteins. These membrane proteins can move into and out of the lipid rafts on a time scale of seconds. Because most cells express more than 50 different kinds of plasma membrane proteins, it is likely that a single raft contains only a subset of membrane proteins and that this segregation of membrane proteins is functionally significant. Certain membrane receptors and signaling proteins, for example, appear to be segregated together in membrane rafts. Caviolin is an integral membrane protein with two globular domains connected by a hairpin shaped hydrophobic domain, which binds a protein to the cytoplasmic leaflet of the plasma membrane. They are a special class of membrane rafts. Caviolin binds cholesterol in the membrane, and the presence of caviolin forces the associated lipid bilayer to curve inward, forming caviole, meaning little caves, in the surface of the cell. So, caviole are unusual rafts. They involve both the leaflets of the bilayer, the cytoplasmic leaflet from which the caviolin globular domains project, and the exoplasmic leaflet, a typical sphingolipid cholesterol raft with associated GPI anchored proteins. Caviole are implicated in a variety of cellular functions, including membrane trafficking within cells and the transduction of external signals into cellular responses. The receptors for insulin and other growth factors, as well as certain GTP binding proteins and protein kinases associated with transmembrane signaling, appear to be localized in rafts and perhaps in caviole. Now let's look at cell-cell interaction. Several families of integral proteins in the plasma membrane provide specific points of attachment between cells or between a cell and extracellular matrix proteins. Integrins are heterodimeric proteins anchored to the plasma membrane by a single hydrophobic transmembrane helix in each subunit. The large extracellular domains of the two subunits, alpha and beta, combine to form a specific binding site for extracellular proteins such as collagen and fibronectin. Integrins are not merely adhesives, they also serve as receptors and signal transducers conveying information across the plasma membrane in both directions. Integrins regulate many processes, including platelet aggregation at the site of a wound, tissue repair, and the activity of immune cells, and the invasion of tissue by a tumor. At least three other families of plasma membrane proteins are also involved in surface addition. They are catherines, immunoglobulin lipoproteins, and selectins. 
Cadherins interact with cadherins of other cells. Immunoglobulin-like proteins show homophilic or heterophilic interaction with integrins of neighboring cells. Selectins, in the presence of calcium ions, bind to specific polysaccharides on the adjacent cell. They are an essential part of the blood clotting process. Integral proteins play a role in many other cellular processes. They serve as transporters and ion channels and as receptors for hormones, neurotransmitters and growth factors. They are central to oxidative phosphorylation and photosynthesis and to cell-cell and antigen cell recognition in the immune system. Integral proteins are also important players in the membrane fusion that accompanies exocytosis, endocytosis, and the entry of many types of viruses into host cells. Now let's look at membrane fusion. A remarkable feature of the biological membrane is its ability to undergo fusion with another membrane without losing its continuity. Within the eukaryotic endomembrane system, which includes the nuclear membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi and the various small vesicles, the membranous compartments constantly reorganize. Vesicles bud from the endoplasmic reticulum to carry newly synthesized lipids and proteins to other organelles and to the plasma membrane. Exocytosis, endocytosis, cell division, fusion of egg and sperm cells, and entry of a membrane-enveloped virus into its host cell all involve membrane reorganization in which the fundamental operation is fusion of two membrane segments without the loss of continuity. So specific fusion of two membranes occurs in the following steps. First, the membrane segments recognize each other. Then their surfaces become closely opposed, which requires the removal of water molecules normally associated with the polar head groups of lipids. Then their bilayer structures become locally disrupted, resulting in fusion of the outer leaflet of each membrane. And their bilayers fuse to form a single continuous bilayer. In receptor-mediated endocytosis or regulated secretion, the fusion process is triggered at the appropriate time or in response to a specific signal. Integral proteins called fusion proteins mediate these events, bringing about specific recognition and a transient local distortion of the bilayer structure that favors membrane fusion. For example, neurotransmitters are released at synapses when intracellular vesicles loaded with neurotransmitter fuse with the plasma membrane. This process involves a family of proteins called snares. Snares in the cytoplasmic phase of the intracellular vesicles are called V-snares. Those in the target membrane with which the vesicles fuse, the plasma membrane during exocytosis, are T-snares. Two other proteins, SNAP25 and NSF, are also involved. During fusion, the V and the T-snares bind to each other and undergo a structural change that produces a bundle of long, thin rods made of helices from both the V and T snares and two helices from SNAP25. The two snares initially interact at their ends, then zip up uh, into the bundle of helices. This structural change pulls the two membranes into contact and initiates the fusion of their lipid bilayers. So now we have come to the end of today's lecture. Let us summarize with the following points. 
Lipids in a biological membrane can exist in gel or fluid states. Fluidity is affected by temperature, fatty acid composition, and sterile content. Flip-flop diffusion of lipids between the inner and outer leaflets of a membrane is very slow, except when specifically catalyzed by flipases, flopases, or scramblases. Lipids and proteins can diffuse laterally within the plane of the membrane, but this mobility is limited by interactions of membrane proteins with internal cytoskeletal structures and interactions of lipids with lipid rafts. Caviolin is an integral membrane protein that associates with the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane, forcing it to curve inward to form caviolet which are involved in membrane transport and signaling. Specific proteins cause local membrane curvature and mediate the membrane fusion during processes such as endocytosis, exocytosis, and viral invasion. So membrane dynamics are a vital part of many cellular processes that are essential to cell and tissue viability.